deconstruction of Apparition Lab, the deconstruction of Panacedon. So we've gone through and done all of the steps of the lab and kind of broke them down for you. Throughout the video, you're going to find masses of um, various things kind of at the same point you would have actually weighed it during the lab so that you would like be able to put those in your lab notebook and follow along that way. And if you go through the whole thing, basically it will follow along the uh, lab procedures, part one, part two, part three, throughout the lab. And you should be able to have all of your data and, f and fill out your lab notebook based on this video. So the first thing we need to do for this lab is we need to weigh out our mixture. So we are going to be using, get it here, there we go. Panacea A will be the mixture that we use to do this demonstration. Uh, we've got to add our weigh vote. Uh, we need to make sure that we don't aren't weighing the, the weigh vote in, as well as our stuff. So we need to tear it. So if I can get the video camera on it, there we go. Hit the little T button right here, and that will zero the mass. Um, now we're going to weigh out three grams of material. Going to add a little bit and wait. And I think that's pretty good. So we're at 3.005 grams. All right, so we have the expert Dr. Parker here to do to do stuff. Hello. Hi. All right, so we've got panacea A. Yep. Right, panacea A. We're going to pour into this Erlenmeyer flask. And we don't want to lose anything, right? We're going to minimize some transfer loss. So I'm going to pour just a little bit of my solvent in so the solvent is dichloromethane. Which typically melts. Plastic. You get me fast. <laughs> and then I'm going to use all this. Yep. Use all this. All of our solvent in here. Now we're dealing with solubilities here. So we're going to notice that most of this is going to dissolve, but you will use your knowledge of physical properties and solubilities to determine which compound potentially is not dissolving in the organic solvent. So I'm just going to swirl and mix until, until most of this is dissolved. And then we're going to do a filtration to get off the solvent, which we'll show you in a second. All right, so now we need to filter out, you notice we've got some solid here. We need to filter out that solid away from the rest of the liquid, or the rest of our solution. So we're gonna use gravity filtration using our glass funnel. A beaker of appropriate size, so you just wanna make sure you're not gonna filter and then end up with solution all the way at the top, so give yourself some room. And we've pre-weighed a filter paper so we can get the mass of the solid after it dries. So this is a pretty small filter paper, but I'm going to quarter it. So I fold it in half and then half again. And then you open it up in the shape of a cone that will sit nicely in your glass funnel. So I'm going to put this over here. I'm just going to hold just the tip of my finger the filter paper. There's any left in there, there's not. Typically, you want to wet this beforehand, but we're just going to be really careful. The reason you wet it is it sticks the filter paper to the side of the funnel so you get a good seal. You don't lose them.
All right, so currently we've separated our solution from the material that hasn't dissolved. So you can see we've got a few crystals down here in the bottom of our filter paper. Um, and we also have some residual crystals that as the solvent has evaporated, has left these crystals up on the top of this cone, which do seem to look different than what's in the bottom here. Also, when filtering, not all of that material has transferred. So the alternate thing that you can do instead of just trying to rinse constantly, kind of maneuver around and pour into your funnel, is you can just wait for the inside of this to dry. Organic solvents dry so typically really fast. So what we can do is use a spatula to scrape away this material and put it into our filter paper to dry towards the end of the lab. So just use the end of this spatula here, kind of scrape around, and most of that has dried. And you do the best you can, and you would just make any observations if you haven't been able to get the rest of it out to show that there has been some transfer loss. And we'll just set this aside to dry while we're doing the rest of the experiment. So this is the mass of the filter paper, the solid, and the watch glass. The masses of the filter paper and the watch glass should either pop up right now or have been reported to you earlier in the video. So we've separated our sucrose at this point, and now we've still got two compounds in this solution, okay, in our dichloromethane or our organic layer, okay, um, or organic solution. So what we've done is taken 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, and we're going to use this to manipulate one of the functional groups on our resulting two compounds that are in our organic solution. So what we're going to do is extract our dichloromethane, and first of all, we're using a separatory funnel. I'm making sure that this stopper is in the closed position so our solution doesn't run all the way to the bottom. And I'm gonna pour our organic solution in here very carefully. And we're gonna take approximately 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, and it's just give and take, give or take a little bit roughly 25 and you notice when I've done that we've created two layers we've got an organic and an aqueous layer and just remember to determine which one is which you just look at their densities so you're choosing between the density of water or aqueous solution versus density of dichloromethane so what we want to do is we want to mix these two layers very well so I don't want to be very gentle with it. I want to make sure I get good mixing. And I've just increased the pressure of the system. So I want to release that pressure by turning the separatory funnel upside down and releasing that pressure as I go. I call this a shake and vent. So I shake and vent three times. And that is one extraction. To make sure the layers separate, I release the pressure by just removing the stopper. And I can use this ring stand to let the layer separate. So now the layers have separated, and now we want to separate the layers by turning the stopper and emptying the bottom layer. slowly turn it as I get towards the bottom and I don't want any of this water to get down to the bottom so what I do instead is I pour this layer out from the top and that's just good technique with the separation funnel. sorry separatory funnel 
pour this back in here, and I want to re-extract my organic layer. with another 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So I have that leftover, pour this in here, and you see again, we get that layer. And then I want to do my extraction again. The repeats. Take out the stopper and let those layers separate. So with the pre-weighed beaker, we want to dispense our bottom layer. And again, you should be able to look at your densities and see which layer this is, whether it's the organic dichloromethane layer or if it's the aqueous layer. And again, we pour out the top layer into our beaker and we can mix those extracts. So now we have our two layers that are separated. You're gonna leave this one off to the side to evaporate over time. And we are going to acidify, so then you'll be able to tell if this is the aqueous layer but we're going to acidify this layer um, that's been separated and we'll get some interesting results. So now we need to acidify our aqueous layer, which remember consisted of our sodium hydroxide. So we're gonna use HCl to neutralize that and we're gonna use about 10 milliliters of that. And we're just going to make sure and go slow because as you know acid base reactions are exothermic and vigorous so we don't want to just pour our 10 milliliters directly into this beaker so first step hold your pipe in so i'm just going to take a little bit and slowly add this to our basic solution So I'll add a little bit. Is this clean? We haven't used it yet. Okay. I can even mix this around. And I want to slowly test the pH. So I'm going to take a piece of um, pH paper and just wet it to get a base. And just touch my glass stirring rod to the paper and I see that it's still really basic. So I will keep adding. Still really basic. So you see if we get a close-up shot, you see that there are some little floaty crystals starting to pop out. And it's taken, you know, a little more than the 10 milliliters reported in the procedure, but that's okay. 10 is our start, and we want to keep adding until we start to see that solid crash out. And it will definitely vary based on how much sodium hydroxide was used.
Definitely acidic. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we've acidified our basic solution, and we've got this solid that's crashed out. So we want to separate that, and this time we're not going to use gravity filtration. It would take way too long. You can see the volume of solution that we have. So we um, want to use. Uh, vacuum filtration and we're going to do that using um, this filter flask. We have a Thomas adapter that's going to create suction between the filter flask and our Buchner funnel. And you can see that our Buchner funnel has these holes. So we're going to basically stopper those using this filter paper. And you can see that it doesn't stick to the bottom. So we're going to have to wet this with our solvent. Typically you use the solvent um, from what your solution is in. Um, so you can make sure that that solution is not going, or sorry, the solid is not going to redissolve. Um, so in this case, we've got an aqueous solution. So we're going to use water to wet this filter paper and cover the holes. So vacuum filtration, we're going to use our back line. And it's going to pull the solution through and leave um, or our solvent through and leave our solid on the tap. So I hook my back line up and you can hear that suction. And I just want to make sure all those holes are covered. I can use my water bottle because this is our aqueous solution. So I use the water just to wet the filter paper and to suction that. And then I can slowly pour my solution Here, start collecting that solid. Notice that I have a lot of solid left over, so I want to rinse that, rinse the crystals to collect those as well. There might be some leftover that you can't get out. So that's an observation that you would need to make to report some transfer loss. So the aspirin's been on the back for a little bit. So we're gonna take a pre-weighed Wavo and we're just gonna scrape the solid into the Wavo to acquire that mass. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we acquired a lot here. And you can see down in the filter flask that there's quite a lot of solid that has essentially crashed out of solution. And um, as this filter flask is cooled, it probably promoted that crystallization. So we could re-filter this. Um, I will just say that as it crashes out in this solution, it's probably not going to be as pure as this initial solution was. Um, but that is an option as well. You just might note a difference in purity. But since we care a little bit more about um, recovery, I think it would be a good idea to refilter this. So what you can do is pour this into a beaker, um, and then you can use this same Buchner funnel and filter paper um, to refilter that as well. So you may remember this beaker from when it was full of liquid. The, uh, the liquid has evaporated and we're just left with this like off-white powder that we're going to recrystallize. And uh, you'll see that or a video really future.